It is? Okay. Um, okay, uh, hopefully you guys can hear me. Let me open my switchboard again. Today is October 31st. No, I have no internet connection. Okay, let's hopefully this uh the show is on, you can hear me and it's streaming. We have forty minutes left. And I want to um talk about the landmark All right. significance, the quality of life enhancing opportunity in what was announced at the White House dot gov official site, what is still there. Okay? I want everybody to go to White House dot gov briefing room tab. Speeches and remarks. On October 27th, President Barack Obama and Joe Biden acknowledged uh, two events, announced two events, Domestic Violence Awareness Month. They announced several events, but the ones that caught my eye and the reason we have uh, to uh, understand that this is an opportunity for entering our evidence as it's been being gathered individually and in various collaborative groups, whether the collaborative group, groups are broken down uh, for uh, fathers' rights groups, mothers' rights groups, girls, women, this is a, or north, south, east, west, uh, gay, lesbian, gay rights, whatever it is, HIV, where, however your evidence, wrongful convictions, that's another thing, wrongful convictions, DHS kidnap for profit, social worker misconduct, state employee misconduct, judicial authorities acting uh, corruptly to um, be sh- uh, to qualify to be stripped of any immunity in the uh, 1983 Civil Rights Act language. Whoever is gathering the evidence about the child slaughter, U.S. economy for our court reform, state of emergency underway in this country at this time has unprecedented due diligence evidence submission opportunity in President Barack Obama's announced domestic violence and foster care event. And the reason you do is because of what is published. First of all, the transcript of his speech, speeches and remarks, is at whitehouse.gov, briefing room, speeches and remarks. And among other things he says in there, quote, quote, let me go to the page. Uh, Quote, we're also doing more to help the victims of domestic violence access legal services and protection. So today, the Justice Department is releasing new tools and best practices to judges, to advocates, to law enforcement. It doesn't say that they're issuing them. to the population, to American citizens and non-citizens working here, contributing to U.S. economy. It says that at, at a level, at the federal level, the White House recognizes that best practices and tools, new tools, need to be issued to judges, advocates, law enforcement. These are the people, the entities. The, in our systems, we always say it's not the, quote, the government. It's not, quote, the system. We have evidence of people abusing, individuals abusing their official corruption, their officially corrupt positioning, their official positions with state departments of human services as state employees with corrupt financially driven relationships with taxpayer paid and private wealthy bar association attorneys with financially incented domestic relationship judges to act as factory-like facilitators to fast-track the sale of not only children of all ages, but disabled adults and elderly. Two, for the billability and the financial agenda benefit of state D Department of Human Services hundreds of contractors. Okay? So... That's what we need to prove. This is an opportunity, even though the verbiage says it's about domestic violence, we have the data as a group of family members, epidemic across this country. In my standard access mechanism, we've grown over 350 when we did the open letter to the president on 924 and U.S. Department of Justice, we were at 322. It has now grown nationwide to three over 350 and uh, over 42 per per the uh, Pennsylvania jurisdiction, of individual need for federal indictments, federal investigations and audits, 
for the sake of who is uh, defrauding the Recovery Act funded federal agencies, okay, for the sake of financial gain. Not the government, nothing wrong with the system. Don't burn yourself out complaining about existing laws, policies, and procedures. But point out with your evidence, identify those people who act in serial criminal fashion doing the same things over and over again. It's always a wolf pack that can be identified that functions with a state agency employee, a state agency DHS contractor, adoption foster contractor evaluator with a domestic relations judge and at least two private attorneys, usually custody or support and or support attorneys, and then the tag team cover-up that they enjoy through abuse of immunity language in the 1983 Civil Rights Act where U.S. district courts, when you complain about these official corruption, fraud, civil rights, assailants as defendants in pro se and former part parish federally filed complaints as federal crime witnesses and these uh, assailants enjoy tag team colleague protection where the u.s district courts act in mechanized fashion to quickly close dismiss or um impose prejudicial docket discrimination which is disclosed the data for that is disclosed through monitoring the docket we have the, what we're submitting is that the data that uh, we gleaned from monitoring the dockets. We have a, an administrative series, Docket Never Lies, Child Slaughter, U.S. Economy for Our Court Reform State of Emergency is measured in docket monitoring. So if we can show this evidence, now we've been submitting our, our evidence to the U.S. Department of Justice saying that the state of emergency is so rampant, so epidemic that municipalities, district attorneys, we have the data, this particular district attorney's office in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, and our mayor, Michael Nutter, and, uh, is, and is complete, are completely unable to uphold their oath to protect public safety, the city's Philadelphia charter, our state Pennsylvania constitution, because they are under the sum of a cash cow uh, a cash cow billing entity, the Department of Human Services, Philadelphia Department of Human Services, who is their answer to their prayers 